It's a wake all night, the Sugar Glider Show. Starring Adama and Ty. We'll look at an impulse purchase gone wrong. And ask Peggy. And a special Adama Bond. And here's your host, Patrick Kinney. Good evening and welcome to the fourth episode of Awake All Night, the Sugar Glider Show. That's Adama, I'm Patrick. We got a big show for you tonight, but we're gonna start out with Bonza Product of the Month. Bonza Product of the Month this month goes to Forest Sugar Glider Handmade in Taiwan. Since the show started, Adama has lots of new friends on Facebook and we're always checking out your products. I kept noticing these really great toys and products made by Hannah in Taiwan. So I emailed her and yeah, she hand makes everything here. Unfortunately, Hannah does not sell outside Taiwan, but she does plan on doing it soon on eBay. Her email is hannah164147 at gmail.com. Congratulations, Hannah of Forest Sugar Glider Handmade on winning Thumbs up product of the month. Bonza Product of the Month is not an advertisement. If you have a glider product that you would like to be considered for Bonza Product of the Month, email Patrick at slotjaw at AOL.com. Adam is crawling up my back right now. I guess he doesn't want to be a host for the whole show, just the beginning in this one, so that's good enough for me. I'm still proud. Anyway, uh, the next thing we're going to do is a little bit different than we've done in the first three episodes. We're going to look at just a little bit at impulse buying. Now, you can talk a lot about impulse buying. There's a lot on the Internet about it. Um, I think most people buy them with the best intentions. You look at these animals and you just fall in love with them and you, you want one in your pocket, you want it to be your friend, you want it to do run up your arm and jump to your friend. But it, like anything, uh, like picking up the guitar, it, it takes practice and takes a lot of time and they need a lot of love. And a lot of people bring them home and realize, gee, I'm not up from midnight to three like Patrick is. I did find this family who purchased two sugar gliders um, they've had them for quite a while now and they just don't have the time so basically they're in the cage a lot and they uh, fortunately um, they found a buyer so I went over I talked to the previous owners and the new owners and let's just see what they have to say my husband and my children talked me into it I guess I expected it kind of be like a puppy train them and then they have fun and they hang around you the children okay. saw the sugar gliders, right. and my husband saw, the, saw them first. Well, I mean, they're irresistible if you, when you go there. He takes one out of his pocket and says, here, hold this, and it jumps to him. You know, oh, I want one of those. You know, they're, he got one in every pocket, so they're kind of cool. But, and I guess once they're bonded, they are like that. We were walking through the mall and um, saw them out in the center area of the mall and walked by and stopped and kind of what's going on over there and the um, people who have them in their pockets took them out and we looked at them and of course the girls go crazy over them and because they are adorable and uh, take them out show they were showing how interactive they are although they were sleeping and kind of up in a ball they put them on their arms and they jump put them in your hands and then they jump back to the people who were holding them. Once they're bonded, I guess you do nothing. They just follow you everywhere. We expected the same thing to happen at home, that we would be able to carry them around in our pockets and that they would be interactive and be with us a lot. It's just, I think that it takes a little more time than people think it does. As uh, we went through that process, we realized, okay, we, there was a certain amount of time that we needed to bond with them up close to us and carry them around, and we are a very busy family. Uh, not home a lot and have a lot of personal activities, and so we actually ended up having um, less time or not as much time to bond with them that we thought. We just don't have the time to do that, to put into the whole bonding process. Um, now we've arrived at a time where we don't think it's fair to them because if they're interactive with families and people then um, then they need to be with a family who can do more with them so uh, we're just not able to do that we felt like we wanted something smart small uh, we saw them in the mall and we fell in love with them at the mall so I'm buying them for my wife uh, as a birthday present she's a, a real good animal person and can really bond with animals and she's always picking up strays and whatnot and I thought this would be a great little thing for her to do and seeing them run around the house and jumping into her pocket that would make me happy. So. They're not for everybody no definitely. I mean they're nocturnal so while you're sleeping they're in here having field day and barking. By the way they do bark. <laughs> Here, 
she is. Hi. There she is. No on. So how's it? So how's it been going with them? They're good, except for that thing spinning all night. Oh. <laughs> Do they make them that make less noise? Yeah, we need to discuss your wheel, but. <laughs> Because that one you can hear in the other bedrooms. So were they like this? At, were they like this at first? No, at first they were horrible. Like you couldn't, you couldn't even like reach in there without them screaming or trying to bite you. And now? <laughs> now, if you put your hand in there, most of the time they'll come out to you. Yeah. <laughs> she's not fat. I'm happy because she's happy. They're happy. The interest in art. So. They like them. They feed treats to them and everything. I want them to be where we could just like walk around and do the dishes with me. That's what I'm waiting yeah. for. Hey, come back here. Yeah. We're well, laying on the table. The she wants bubble. They're not, they sleep in there with him, so they're. <laughs> they like that. They like their pouch. That's their comfort zone. That and the blue one. So far, so good. I mean, it's uh, not a bad investment. Uh, we'll keep loving them and hopefully they'll come around. So, it's getting there. <coughs> I just want to be able to hold them all the time. Your questions get answered on Ask Peggy. Is neutering a good thing for non-breeding male sugar gliders? That's from Bryant Travelson from the East Coast. If you're not going to be breeding your sugar gliders, having the males neutered are an absolute uh, for many reasons. The main reason is health reasons. Um, if you get them neutered, you don't have to worry about testicular cancer. Yes, that does run in sugar gliders as well. If a male does not breed, they can, they can become very hormonal, uh, very territorial, um, and not so easy to to deal with at that time with they smell a female in heat. Normally if you don't have a female around, they're pretty good about it, but as soon as they smell a female, they will, they will become very, very moody. Um, it's very recommended to have your males neutered. Email your questions for Peggy for future shows to slotjaw at AOL.com. That's S-L-O-T-J-A-W at AOL.com. Here's another Adama Bond. Okay, if you saw the last episode, episode three, you know I have two sugar gliders, Adama and Ty. Ty is doing great. He's advancing. But this month, we are going to focus on Adama. This would be called advanced, and I don't suggest anybody do any of the things. These are not tips for you to take your sugar glider outside. Um, but this is what I've been doing. I started with Adam in the bathroom. Um, I got him used to a one area that he's safe. If I send him somewhere else, I am crowding him. So basically, he knows he can go in his cage. He knows he can go on the curtain. He knows he can go to me. He knows if I set him somewhere and I stay there, I'm watching him. But he knows he has to come back to me. So the next step, we're leaving the bathroom now. I've been putting him back in a pouch and taking him everywhere with me, everywhere. So he is on me for about a week. After that week is up, I would keep the pouch in my pocket, but Adama would be in my shirt and he would go everywhere with me. For the first few days, he stays in my shirt. I don't invite him out. I don't take him out except just to go back into the travel cage and to give him something to drink or some fruit or something like that. But other than that, he's in my shirt. After a few days of this, I started taking him out and putting him on my shoulder. Now, the, this is somewhere where I am very familiar with. I have him on my shoulder. I know that he can't get very far if he decided to jump, but I certainly would not do this if I thought there was a chance he may jump. I'm just taking extra precautions. People constantly ask me, Aren't you afraid if when he's in your shirt or he's in your pocket that you're going to forget he's there and you'll sit on him or something will happen? I don't know how you guys feel, but I know when he's on me, in my shirt, on my shirt, in my pocket, wherever he is on me, I am hypersensitive to where he is at all times. I never forget that he's there. 
So I'd find myself a hall somewhere that I am extremely familiar with and I could put him on my shoulder and he couldn't get into trouble if he got spooked. And I'd walk up and down the hall with him on my shoulder. After doing this in several different places, I ventured outside. It's kind of a feeling you get when you know that he's on you and he's on your shoulder or he's in your pocket and you know it, there's sort of a, there is a bond there. It's like, that's a perfect word for it. This is a bond. And I know it's a feeling, but I know he's not going anywhere. So after I feel confident with all the hallways and, st and things like that, I ventured outside. Now, not at night because I can't see at night. He can, but I can't. So during the day, I am, and not in direct sunlight because, you know, their eyes are very sensitive, um, I would take him outside and walk somewhere I am very familiar with and usually with another person following. And we would just practice walking up and down just for a few minutes, and we could do this a few times a week. And that's where I'm at with the Dhamma Bond. I don't, like again, I said, I don't suggest this for everybody. This is the way I do things. Remember, there's many ways to raise a sugar glider. This is the way I personally do it. I like to be able to take my boy everywhere I go. We'll see you next month and we'll take a look more at Thai. This is Emily, the Sheila from Down Under, reminding you glider fans to do your research before purchasing any animals to add to your family. We'll see you next month on Awake All Night, the Sugar Glider Show.